Welcome to Inside North Dakota Politics with Nicholas Qualick, Josh Manny, and political correspondent Maddie Beer Temple. Good morning, I'm Nicholas Qualick. And I'm Josh Manny, and this is Inside North Dakota Politics. Today, a conversation with the chairwoman of the Democratic NPL party, who says she won't be seeking another term. Plus, Senate Majority Leader Rich Wardner will talk about the importance of a reliable electric grid. But first, a look at the big stories that happened last week in politics. North Dakota joined 20 states suing the Biden administration over its removal of the Keystone XL pipeline permit. KX News spoke with our state's attorney general about why he signed on to the multi-state lawsuit and what it means for North Dakotans. Attorney General Wayne Stengem says initial plans for the Keystone Pipeline were to transport as much as 100,000 barrels of our Bakken crude oil. But once the Dakota Access Pipeline was operating, that was no longer necessary. With the Dakota Access Pipeline now under court scrutiny, North Dakota could need another place for our oil to go. And that's where the Keystone XL Pipeline would come in. The crux of the case filed in Texas District Court is that President Biden's move is unconstitutional since it's Congress's role to regulate interstate commerce. Stengem also says the revocation of the permit would damage the U.S.'s move towards energy independence and could strain North Dakota's relationship with Canada, which is where the pipeline begins. It is a threat to North Dakota. It's a threat to all of America and to our energy independent and certainly long term and not getting it from unstable countries or bringing it in by tankers in manners that are much less safe than this, than this uh, pipeline coming down from our best friend in the world and our biggest, by far, our biggest trading partner. Stengem says joining the suit is not costing taxpayers any extra money, and that's because North Dakota will be participating with lawyers already on staff. But even if the state did need additional help, he says he thinks it would be worth it. Biden's removal of the pipeline's permit is one of his many executive actions aimed at addressing climate change. A bipartisan effort is being made for the EQUAL Act. It's new legislation aiming to eliminate the sentencing disparity between crack and powder cocaine. Currently, people convicted of crack offenses are given sentences 18 times worse than those convicted of cocaine offenses. Many criminal justice reform advocates say this disproportionately affects people of color. And while reductions to the disparity have been made, they say more needs to be done. North Dakota Congressman Kelly Armstrong supports the bill and says it just makes sense. The vast majority of people who are charged under these crimes are between the age of 18 to 25. They are going to re-enter society at some point in time. And locking, I mean, locking people up for 30 years for a first-time nonviolent offense doesn't solve a lot of our problems. And we can help save lives. We can help bring families back together. And in the process, you know what else? We'll save the taxpayers some money. Armstrong hopes the Equal Act gets a judiciary hearing. North Dakota Senate voted green on a bill granting businesses immunity from COVID-19 liability claims. House Bill 1175 seeks to protect employers from lawsuits brought by employees who may have contracted the virus at work. While there were concerns over the bill shielding businesses that acted recklessly, those supporting the bill say intentional malicious acts could still face legal action. Senator Jerry Klein says the bill doesn't protect businesses' bad behavior, but recognizes the difficulties small businesses endured during the pandemic. Over 30 states have already passed COVID-19 business liability protection. This is not a get out of jail free card. If there were malicious acts or disregards for public safety, this legislation holds those poor decisions and bad intentions accountable. Those cases can still pursue legal action. What we hope 1175 will do is provide a safe harbor and protection for our businesses to continue to operate. The Senate passed a bill by a vote of 41 to 6, and last month the House passed it 77 to 17. State senators sat through two hours of testimony regarding a bill that would ban transgender student athletes. Some who argued in favor of the bill say there is a biological unfairness of girls competing against transgender students who identify as female. The committee heard from representatives, women, and local organizations. What would be the purpose to wait until a female student loses her opportunity to participate in an all-girls girl sports team? or loses the opportunity to receive a scholarship because a biological male who claims transgender status as a woman receives her spot. So for consistency throughout the state, it needs to be the legislature that defines this policy. 
Let's be clear, House Bill 1298 does not prohibit any student from participating in sports. Some also spoke in opposition discussing the long-term damage a ban on transgender student athletes would have not only on the students themselves, but the community as a whole, and that there is currently not one transgender athlete on record in the state. But saying that trans girls, even after hormone therapy, are automatically going to win any event in any sport because they were assigned male at birth, portrays cis girls as inherently weak and feeble, and it portrays trans girls as inherently predatory. It helps them to build positive social connections, gain leadership skills, and succeed in school as a whole. And to the best of my knowledge, was written without any input from the transgender community or any consideration of its impact on the emotional and mental health of transgender youth. House Bill 1298 has already passed the House. The Senate Judiciary Committee has taken no action on the bill yet. North Dakota hunters will not get the chance to sport their pink camouflage this season. The North Dakota House decided not to pass Senate Bill 2143, which would have allowed big game hunters to wear solid or camouflage fluorescent pink. Lawmakers made the argument that it would be difficult for hunters who are colorblind to see the pink hue. The bill failed by a vote of 78 to 14. Still to come on Inside North Dakota Politics, Senate Majority Leader Rich Warner discusses a resolution to put research and development toward cleaner coal. We'll tell you how the legislature hopes to allow North Dakota coal-fired electricity to compete in states with stricter environmental regulations. 43% of kids are bullied online. 90% of teens who report being cyberbullied have also been bullied offline. 17% of kids who have been cyberbullied have thought about suicide. 77% of children who are bullied did not report it. It only takes one to make a difference. Not, not in, in our, our town. town. Part of the KX News Putting North Dakota First Community Outreach, brought to you by McDonald's. What's better than low prices? Even lower prices. That's what you get at iKeating Furniture World. Plus no interest for five full years. Lower prices on everything you need, from furniture to flooring. And right now at iKeating, enjoy better sleep and save $300 on our most premium Tempur-Pedic mattresses. And save $300 on the best-selling Sealy Hybrid mattress. Plus, this is important, no interest for five full years. It's better than low prices. It's lower prices. Now at iKeating Furniture World. There are many gaming choices across the region, but why play games that don't reward you? Instead, join the nightclub, the Players Club at Prairie Nights Casino and Resort. When you use the nightclub card, you earn rewards like free slot play, comps, entries into big giveaways, great discounts, special offers, and more. And right now, you can get in on new member and referral bonuses. Like rewards? Join the club. The nightclub, only at Prairie Nights Casino and Resort. Feel lucky tonight. In the truck game, greatness is defined by a relentless commitment to the customer, forged over decades, built by a team resolute in helping you achieve your greatness. Experience this award-winning lineup today. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling truck for 44 years straight and counting. Now get up to 5,000 in total savings on the all-new 2021 F-150, only at your Northland Ford dealers. Welcome back to Inside North Dakota Politics on KX. Senate Majority Leader Rich Warner, Republican out of Dickinson, joins us now. Senator Warner, thanks for being here. And I appreciate being here. Thank you. So you introduced Senate Concurrent Resolution 4012, which looks at the Reliancy uh, at the energy grid. It looks at transparency for consumers and wants to put research and development towards carbon capture and sequestration. Tell us why is this important for North well, Dakota? Well, first of all, Josh, it's important for the economic stability of the state of North Dakota. And the people here and that we keep commerce going, as you know, electricity is a big part of uh, doing business in the state of North Dakota. If we have a blackout or a brownout, it's going to affect the commerce here and it's going to affect a lot of things. So we want to make sure that we have reliable, resilient, uh, affordable and adequate electricity in order to maintain the economy and, and the quality of life in North Dakota. 
Now, a lot of this is about the market. So investing in research and development for carbon capture and sequestration makes our uh, coal-fired electricity uh, more valuable in markets such as Minnesota or Illinois yes. where they have passed stricter environmental regulations. Uh, one thing that the bill talks about is how those regulations are devaluing dispatchable energy, which is coal-fired electricity, and putting more valuable value on undispatchable, which is wind power. Correct. So this Senate concurrent resolution is aimed at essentially making North Dakota coal-fired electricity more competitive in out-of-state markets. Well, that's correct. What's happened in other states, they said, we do not want carbon electrons. They've made that choice. And because we are a transporter of electricity, it does affect us. But we want to make sure that we take care of our own state and that we don't run into a situation where we run into blackouts and brownouts. Therefore, we're doing this study to make sure that we have reliable energy. And we feel a part of that is going to be coal-fired baseload dispatchable energy that we need to keep that and so we're going to do the study to make sure that there is a value to having that as we go forward into the future as you know that we're going to have more electric cars there's going to be more electric gizmos and we're going to have to have reliable energy in order to do that and you talked a little bit about carbon capture and sequestration that's our answer to meeting those requirements in other states. If we sequester that carbon and don't let it go into the atmosphere, now we have carbon-free electrons. I'm not sure if that's good enough for them, but we're hoping it is, and uh, our carbon footprint should be zero. It won't be, it won't be in the atmosphere. It won't affect the temperature. Well, as you said, uh, we basically produce more electricity than we consume here in the state. Uh, we don't have enough people. We don't have the industry. So the electricity that we're producing from these coal-fired plants needs to go somewhere. And you just said that might not be good enough for them. What happens if it's not good enough for them? And we invest all of this into carbon capture and sequestration. Well, I think that there are markets where we can and we may have to have transmission line. That means we have to expand our transmission lines. We've got to do more work there. Uh, we're not going to give up. Uh, we think that this study is going to give us some answers to that. Uh, you know, we, we have the, the Public Service Commission involved. We've got the uh, MISO, which is the Midwest uh, Interoperable uh, Service Area that uh, is involved. We've got the utilities involved and the legislature is involved and the transmission authority in North Dakota. So with, with all those groups working together, we want to make sure that we do not end up with a shortage of electrons in our state. Plus, we would like to make sure we uh, move electricity to other parts of the country. Now, the part of the, the SCR that mentions consumer transparency, tell me the importance of this. Well, I, I think consumers want to know what, what's it cost. They want to they wanna make sure that they're getting the right uh, amount of electrons for the right price. Remember, uh, right now, we have a lot of our renewables have a production tax credit. They have a tax credit, which makes them very uh, competitive in the market because they can put uh, electrons from wind generation into the market at a very low rate. And uh, I think that when that comes off, there's going to be a change. And I think that people need to understand the pricing of electrons and megawatts as we go forward so that uh, they feel comfortable and in, the, in their uh, energy supply. All right, Senator Rich Warner, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Up next on Inside North Dakota Politics, Dem NPL Party Chairwoman Kylie Overson joins us to discuss her recent announcement that she will not be seeking another term for now. Overson will explain the big picture that's coming up on Inside North Dakota Politics. 
Double your gift and double your impact during the Bishop Bryan Catholic School Days of Giving, March 22nd through the 25th. Help promote our students, teachers, and programs. Text Go Lions to 243725 or visit bishopbryan.com slash days of giving. Careful, your regular old can opener leaves razor sharp edges. Ouch! You need the new Safety Can Express. Now you can pop the top off and leave perfectly smooth edges on the lid and the can. Other openers use blades to cut through the lid, leaving razor sharp edges. Safety Can Express actually unseals the lid from the side, leaving smooth, safe edges. Safety Can works on broken pop top cans, dented cans, big heavy cans, small odd shaped cans, too. No more sharp steel when Safety Can breaks the seal. Call and get the new Safety Can Express for just $29.99. But wait, call now and you can double your order. Just pay a separate fee. We'll even ship it to you fast and free. This offer is not available on Amazon. Call now. Call 1-800-990-5312 or visit safetycanexpress.com. So call 1-800-990-5312 now. Menards has everything you might need to care for your furred friends. Our variety of dog and cat toys can't be beat. And our pet food selection will offer something for even the pickiest eaters. Right now, check out our selection of Rachel Ray dog foods. Cooked with the world's best ingredients to keep your dog happy and healthy. All Rachel Ray dog foods are 11% off right now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Still looking for the simple life? Because those days are gone, Clark. You're saying you're super bad? Every life has problems. Even the extraordinary ones. Superman and Lois. Tuesdays at 8 on the Dakota CW. Come back to Inside North Dakota Politics on KX. She's the second woman to serve as chair of the Democratic NPL party and one of the longest to serve in that role. But just days ago, she let it be known she won't be seeking a fourth term. Joining us with more on her decision is Kylie Overson. Thanks for setting aside some time for us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. First, how you started. This journey began more than six years ago. Tell us why you ran in the first place and what you are most proud of. Sure. So when I was approached to run in 2015 for chair of the Dem NPL, uh, I, I thought that was a really crazy idea. Um, I hadn't ever really considered party leadership as a part of my journey, but but I agreed to take it on. And, and the reason I stepped up is because I thought it was important that we had more women in leadership and that we have more young people at the table. And I thought that I would have a lot to offer the party um, as we moved forward. And so, you know, looking back on these last six years, um, certainly being with the Dem NPL and running this party in North Dakota has been a tough road, but I'm really proud of the work we did to bring more voices to the table. We've had historically diverse candidates over the past six years. We've put our party in a very strong financial position, and we are well poised to succeed in the coming years. You know, rebuilding and reshaping doesn't take place overnight, but we've, again, laid really solid groundwork, and I'm very excited to see what will happen in the coming years. Now, you said in your statement this would be your last term, and then in parentheses it says, for now. Uh, explain that subtly. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, it's just that I'm not closing the door to, you know, potentially coming back into leadership someday in the future. I'm still still relatively young and certainly younger than most people when they come into a leadership role like this. And so I didn't want to close the door on possibly coming back into leadership or getting involved in some other way. Um, so it's just a, a farewell to the role for now, and, and we'll see what the future holds. I mean, because it is it's a quite an encompassing statement. Can you tell us more specifically? specifically what led you to decide that now is the best time to step away for a while? Sure. So when I ran for my third term, actually, so it would have been in 2019, my now husband, Brian, and I talked about it and made the decision together that if I stepped forward for this this third term, that that would be, that would be the last term for, for a while. Um, it'll give me a chance to step away and, and focus more on my legal practice, which has been growing steadily over the past two years, and 
um, and hopefully look forward to starting a family with my husband and, you know, taking on some of those other um, roles and, and other opportunities that committing as much time as I have to the Dem NPL has kind of hindered some of those other opportunities. Now, things have changed a lot since you've been in this position. Uh, North Dakota is, as you know, Republican-led. But now, as you're leaving, Democrats are in control nationally. Uh, do you think that could help change much at home? I, yes and no. I think that having Democrats in the White House and Democrats controlling Congress is going to be ultimately good for North Dakotans. We've already seen that with Biden's um, American Rescue Plan and the you know, financial economic relief that our neighbors will be seeing or already seeing. As far as how it helps or hurts the Dem NPL specifically is yet to be seen. You know, we, I think the, the opposite party always struggles when the other party's in the White House. And I think what we will see, though, is a, a Democratic National Committee, a national party that is more committed to state party infrastructure and um, support and leadership. And so we have um, Jamie Harrison, who is heading up the DNC now, and he's a, a good friend of mine and a former state party chair who understands the importance of building up those state parties from the, the grassroots up. And so I think we'll see increased support at that level, which will be really helpful for us in the long run. And speaking of another level up, is that something perhaps in your future? <laughs> um, it, not in the immediate future. It's it's certainly something I've thought about, but I, I'm not making any plans for any any offices or future runs or anything at this time. I'm I'm looking forward to taking to taking a break. <laughs> okay. Sometimes breaks are nice. Yeah, I can understand that. Uh, finally, Kylie, what advice would you give your successor? You know, be, be open to learning the hard lessons. Um, make sure that you have people around you who want you and the party and the state to succeed and know that you won't always be the smartest person in the room. So you surround yourself with people who are smarter than you and who know more and are willing to help you grow and challenge you um, throughout the journey. It's being state party chair in any state and any party is, is not easy. It is particularly difficult being in a state like North Dakota leading the Democratic Party. So um, be prepared with, with thick skin and, and a good sense of humor. And I guess uh, one more final, what's next? Uh, what's next for me is is really focusing on my law practice and my family and, and just taking a step away for for at least some time. And I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. Well, I'm sure if there's any news from uh, from yourself, we'll be uh, reporting that out to everybody watching at home. So Kylie Overson, chair of the North Dakota Democratic NPL. Thanks again. Thank you. Advocates want not as strict of punishments, but law enforcement says they're not equipped to enforce impairment. We'll hear from both sides on recreational marijuana right after this. So it comes down to this. Never imagined you being a poker player. Just started. Even got my lucky shades on. Give me two. I'll take one. Shoot, maybe if I go all in, she'll fold. All in. Call. Let's see them, guys. Pair of queens. How'd you read my bluff? You should just stick to fixing cars. Nice glasses, by the way. Thank you, North Dakota, for nominating the remarkable women in your life. Now we want to introduce the finalists to you. Join KX News at 9 on the Dakota CW and KX News at 10 every Tuesday during the month of March as we feature inspirational stories of these remarkable women. Remarkable Women of North Dakota is sponsored by Basin Electric Power Cooperative and Berg's 24-hour towing and crane service. The world is a noisy place. People talk at each other and over each other, but nobody talks to each other. It gets us angry and it makes us cynical, and we don't learn or grow. I want to change that. So every night, we're going to sit down with America's top newsmakers and biggest celebrities, and I'm going to show you what happens when we have a conversation, when we actually communicate. So let's talk. Banfield, weeknights, 10, 9 central on News Nation. Our local service providers do so much for us. They save lives, serve, and protect. They do this service out of duty and commitment to the community. 
That's why KX News wants to give back. Each month, KX News will deliver breakfast or lunch to a local public service team. And that evening, we'll introduce you to those heroes who serve and protect your community every day. KX Gives Back, KX News' commitment to putting North Dakota first. Sponsored by McDonald's. Welcome back to Inside North Dakota Politics on KX. Debate over a bill to legalize recreational marijuana in North Dakota is heating up in the legislature. The legislation is halfway there after having passed the House last month. It's now in the Senate Human Services Committee. But the group did not yet vote whether to recommend the bill to the full chamber. After that, Governor Bergen would need to sign it to become law. Maddie Beer Temple tells us the status of House Bill 1420. Dustin Pyre says the state's current marijuana laws go too far. I don't believe that people who have simple possession of cannabis should be locked up with AAA felony murders, as I was. A bill would prevent that from happening by legalizing small amounts of recreational marijuana for those over 21, with restrictions. Pyre supports loosening the laws, but thinks home grow should also be allowed. We need to have the people who want to grow their own cannabis, who can grow more strains than the dispensaries at a better rate uh, so they can get what they actually need. Efforts to legalize the drug have popped up in the past, most notably with an initiated measure in 2018 led by Legalize ND Chairman David Owen, who says legalization is coming to the state one way or another. So the choice here is, do you want a Republican-dominated, Republican-controlled legalization bill, or do you want a citizen-led bill that's going to be much more moderate to liberal? Owen added that the consequences of a criminal record associated with marijuana are huge. No student loans. So you can't better yourself, can't go to college, can't get more opportunity. Drastically reduced employment, disbarment from potentially serving in the military, losing access to certain homes, rentals. It basically means everything about your life just got this much more complicated. He says the bill is a no-brainer from the tax revenue and criminal justice standpoints, but law enforcement disagrees, saying legalization would increase DUI, traffic fatalities, and health care costs. Plus, the state currently isn't equipped to handle the change. What happens to the canines in the state that are already here? We already have them. Canines do cost some money. Um, what are we going to do with those canines that have been trained in marijuana? Kaiser also said there isn't an impairment measure for marijuana, like BAC for alcohol, and the state would need to invest in more drug recognition experts, which is costly and time-consuming. The Senate Human Services Committee did not yet vote on the bill. Reporting in Bismarck for KX News, Maddie Beer Temple. The bill passed in the House by a vote of 56 to 38. That's all the time we have. Thanks for joining us.